Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Catherine and today we're going to be talking about Mary Magdalene. All right, so in the New Testament, I like to think that Mary Magdalene is the second most important woman. So I just got done reading this book on her. It's called Mary Magdalene in the Visions of Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich. So if you are not familiar with Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich, she was a nun in the early 1800s who saw all these visions of the Old Testament to the New Testament to beyond to hell all this crazy stuff she had the stigmata she could only for the last 12 years of her life could only receive the Eucharist that was the only food she was able to eat and she wasn't able to drink anything except for water so she she had a very interesting life in 2004 she was named a blessed by Pope John Paul II so she's not yet a saint so right now she's just beatified. There are two giant volumes of books based on all of her visions. So there are some shorter versions. For example, this one on Mary Magdalene is all of her visions specifically on Mary Magdalene. The rest of the stuff is cut out, but there is little transitions in between everywhere. There is one specifically on the Passion of the Christ, which inspired the film, Mel Gibson's film, Passion of the Christ. So for example, in that film, there are certain scenes that are not in the Bible. When Peter, you know, I made that video on Peter, you can watch it here. After Peter denies Jesus three times, he finds Mary and runs to her and says, Mother, I, I've denied him. That theoretically actually happened. We just didn't see it in the Bible, but it was in her visions. I think this is kind of why I don't like the TV show The Chosen, right? So I only watched the first three episodes of The Chosen. I could not get into it. I admit, like, Jonathan Rumi is a great Catholic, amazing playing Jesus. And, you know, if you listen to the Hallow app, I love his scriptural rosaries, but I digress. I, I did not like the first episode of The Chosen because it focused on Mary Magdalene and it was just weird. Um, I, I remember watching it and thinking like, I, I don't think this actually happened. So that's why I love this because theoretically this is what actually happened. If you believe the visions of Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich, you don't have to, right? These are private revelations. If you read this book, which I know a lot of you have, The Consecration of St. Joseph by Father Donald Calloway, if he is one of your shepherds, if you trust him, then you might you should probably trust these visions because he quotes Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich's visions multiple times in this consecration book. So if it's good enough for Father Donald Calloway, it's good enough for me, I'm gonna go ahead and trust these visions. Okay, so let's actually get into Mary Magdalene. So I found this book to be incredible because I just, you don't get to know that much about her as a person. You know, she has her role as the prostitute that anointed Jesus's head. But in this book, you get to know more about her and her relationship with her siblings. So the first thing you learn almost on the first page of the book is that she is the sister of Lazarus and Martha. She is that Mary who was at Jesus's feet while Martha's cleaning the house and saying, Jesus, why? Why don't you rebuke my sister and make her clean with me? She's that Mary. Now, the first thing I thought when I read that is, okay, is this biblical? Like, can I trust these visions? I, I got a little bit like, wait, 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 what? How, how have I never known this before? And in the appendix of this book, I, I'll have the book linked below. If you do buy the book through my affiliate link down below, you are supporting my channel. Back to this, um, there is an appendix in the back of the book where it explains biblically how you can determine that she is the sister of Lazarus and Martha. So there is that guidance in the back of the book in the appendix. There are a few things that can help you out with reading this book. So the fact that she's the sister of Lazarus and Martha really shows that she was a wealthy woman. If you've ever been to Bethany, which I absolutely love that, it was it was great. I was in Israel. My priest friend said, as we were driving up there, he said, we're going to see the best friends of Jesus. And it's very interesting because Lazarus clearly knew Jesus uh, for many, 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 many years. He says he was about eight years older than Jesus and he actually supported Joseph and Mary. So he knew Jesus for many years. And Lazarus was one of the few men that Jesus would actually give a hug to. He would only hug, apparently, according to these visions, uh, the elder apostles and Lazarus. So they were really best buds. Uh, Mary Magdalene was a wealthy woman. Martha and Lazarus and her parents died. And th through casting lots, Magdalene received this beautiful castle that apparently was worth a lot of money that did not help with the fact that from a very early age, she was very superficial, very beautiful, and fell into sin at quite an early age. And her parents died when she was seven. More things that I found very interesting was the fact that after her conversion, she had a relapse, right? It wasn't just smooth sailing after her conversion. So she had her conversion, she anointed Jesus's head, she anointed Jesus's head and feet multiple times. That wasn't just a one shot deal. So after her conversion, Martha wanted her to go home to Bethany, but instead she went back to Magdalene. 
and they are fell back into sin and worse sin than before because Satan what realized he could lose her now so he was really really going after her which is kind of scary to think so I want you guys to remember that when you have a relative or a friend who has a come to Jesus moment as we always say or a conversion make sure you don't stop praying for that friend because they could relapse. So another thing I want to bring up is before her conversion, Martha spoke to Jesus. So I'm going to quote this right here. Martha spoke to Jesus of Magdalene and her own great anxiety on her account. Jesus comforted her, telling her that Magdalene would certainly be converted, but that she must on no account wary of praying for her and exhorting her to change her life. You can't stop praying for your friends, you guys. Your friends you're worried about, your family you're worried about, don't stop praying for them. More things I found interesting is actually that she was not beautiful during the crucifixion. So if you've seen the Passion of the Christ and she looks really beautiful during the Passion of the Christ, that was not the case according to these visions. It actually says Magdalene was tall both in figure and carriage. Her beauty, however, was now destroyed owing to her violent repentance and intense grief. She was, if not decidedly ugly, at least painful to look upon on account of her unrestrained fury of her passions. It's, I mean, it goes into much more detail here, but it is crazy. Wow, this lighting is way better right now. Oh man, I've been like trying to film this video all day, but it keeps raining, so that doesn't help. Just other things that I found super interesting that don't necessarily have to do with Mary Magdalene is Saint Veronica, I always thought that was kind of weird, the story of Saint Veronica, how she just was there during the Passion and pressed the cloth into Jesus' face and had the thing. And I was always like, really? She got to be a saint because of that? Is that all she did? Saint Veronica is mentioned a bunch of times in this. She was considered one of the holy women who were kind of like disciples who were following around Jesus all the time. It talks about the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman. Her name was actually Dina. I think that's kind of cool. Didn't know the name Dina has been around that long talks about Mary the Sufanite. There's a million Marys in this book. It's kind of crazy. I did not realize how common a name it was back then, but that's a lot of the time Protestants argument that Mary had other children and all that kind of weird stuff is, oh, this vaguely references Mary. And then you're, it's very obvious that this, they were talking about another Mary. And then it goes on to explain that Mary, Mary Magdalene was there at the crucifixion and afterwards how they prepare Jesus's body. I found that very interesting. And then how she was the first one to see Jesus after he rose from the dead. All that good stuff explains that after uh, the ascension, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus give all the money they have basically to the cause, right? To the community. Super interesting. They were all super wealthy. So that was awesome how their parents were good holy people it doesn't give a lot of clarity to where mary magdalene lived in like the later years it does briefly mention that they went to france but doesn't give a lot on that i would have liked but you know who knows what kind of vision she was having to to learn where uh she and martha and lazarus ended up but overall i just found it super fascinating learned a lot about the saint whom i've never had a special devotion to mary magdalene uh, I hope to have one. I, you guys know I struggle with having devotions to male saints, so I'm trying to connect with all these female saints. And uh, Mary Magdalene, I just never had a devotion to her. So anyway, I 10 out of 10 recommend this book. I've never done a book really review on here before, so I don't know if I exactly nailed it, but I just like talking about stuff from everything. I don't read that much, so this was a big deal for me to read a book. It, But it wasn't that long. I mean, look, the text is pretty big. It's not that many pages. You learn a lot, it goes through really quickly. It only took me about a week to read it and I didn't read every single day. Really helped me sleep because as you guys know, I have a lot of issues sleeping. This is why I'm wearing a bunch of makeup right now to hide all the lines. But it really actually did help me sleep to power down my phone, read this book, go to bed. So recommend that too. If you're struggling with discipline, this is a good way to discipline yourself because you know, you want to read the book because it's so fascinating. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, please, if you're interested, purchase the book down below using my affiliate link. That will really help me out. And I'll just, I appreciate you guys so much for that. Give this video a thumbs up, hit subscribe, hit the bell so you never miss one of my videos. I really, really appreciate it. I know I haven't been making as many videos lately. I've been very, very busy. Uh, work has been nuts. I've gotten a lot more responsibility at my job. My social life has been really good. And unfortunately due to that, my YouTube channel has been suffering. And I've been having issues getting inspiration for this YouTube channel. That's why I was, I was excited when I, I started reading this. I was like, I gotta make a video about this. But I have a few more videos planned. It's just, it takes so long to sit down and film. So I'm sorry, I'm totally behind on that. But if you guys watched all the way to the end, 
thank you because again that also helps out my channel with the algorithm you're the best thank you so much i'll see you next time bye